the name is Lala. Okay. Hi everyone, 
Ash is here with Peter Connolly and Murty Schofield, the composer for Terminator 4 and 5 and 6, and the writer of Terminator 6 over there. Not this guy. Uh, he didn't write the games yet. <laughs> uh, so we're here today to talk to you about uh, the Dark Angel as usual and to start kickstart our sh not kickstart start our shop you know launch our shop which um, will go live during the stream during the stream the Kickstarter backers will receive an email with the discount code which will offer you a 10% discount on all the purchases you will make until the 2nd of January after 2nd of January that coupon will not be valid so if you want to order anything from our shop you will have to do it um, by the 2nd of January and it's only valid for the Kickstarter supporters so please don't share that code with anyone else uh, but you will receive the code when I tell you well I'll actually send it live um, so how are we good very good thank you I'm ready yeah. for Christmas yes. yes 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 still some things to do but Is we'll it get Christmas it, it oh, is heck. apparently okay. apparently so <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so guys, as usual, you send us your messages and your co comments. I will read them out and ask these two questions if you have any for them. Um, Merti, we haven't seen you last time here. Um, so how do you feel that the Dark Angel is actually funded now? Uh, oh, it's a huge sense of relief when I, when I heard that it had broken through that barrier. But then um, the excitement was that there were extra days left as well. So it could, you know, c carry on. Um, so the excitement was so intense. I think I must have passed out for a few days because the next thing I knew it was all finished. And, <laughs> and um, you know, we, we got, the, what was it, 70? Just over 70,000. Just yeah, over 70,000. Yeah, yeah. So that was that was brilliant news to hear. Um, yeah, I was sorry I couldn't be here last time, um, but I was having a, a brain transplant. And, uh, didn't and, happen. Uh, <laughs> <obviously>. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I managed to make it today. So um, yeah, send in your questions. Let's, let's hear what you want to know. Yeah, so um, without further ado, we're going to launch the shop now, I think. Yes, yes And yes. keep talking about stuff. Um, what do you feel about the shop? The, I think it's great, a gr definitely a great idea because obviously we hit 70,000, which is, you know, it's a lot of money to be invested in such a project. But we didn't, we didn't reach stretch goal one, two or three. You know, we want to get more money to be able to do more things with the project. So the money, all proceeds from the shop, there's no profit involved in that and with regards to, you know, pay for my time or whatever. Um, it's going to go straight into the project and it's going to go to um, employ musicians, more music from Richard Niles. Um, it, it, you know, it's 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 not a money making exercise. It's, it's, it's purely um, going to be invested to better this project and to make things you know my life a lot easier and make the project a lot bigger and better than where it, it could be yeah we hope to reach at least strategic goal one with, yes. with the shop maybe strategic goal two as well you never know we might even reach that um now i should also say that the shop supports paypal and it supports stripe which is secure method as well uh, the one you used for the amazon or kickstarter that's stripe so those of you who couldn't pledge because they don't have cards, but they have PayPal, now you can do it. Uh, and the shop is actually now live. Uh, the backers uh, should now receive their discount code. This is our Ren. It's his shop. Amazing artwork. Isn't that a great Inna. piece of artwork? It yeah. is. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, it's amazing. It's terrific it? artwork. Yeah. Uh, Ina did an amazing job in a couple of days. She just made it to us. And our craft designer added all the, Laura Titoa, she added all the, um, items but you can see the picture in full on actual I mean, that's the face of somebody you'd trust isn't it he's yeah. not psychotic yes. or you know he's not dangerous Absolutely, or mean yeah. that's a person you'd really love to uh, do dealings with um yeah so we that's that's our ren basically um and let us just switch back to us you can see over here the items we currently have on the shop uh, for sale. Uh, some of the stuff will not be available right away, so the, everything, everything you see there is available for order now. We will have additional stuff uh, for you to buy later on, so as you, you might notice that not all t-shirts are there yet. Um, that's because we just didn't have time to put them all up because it, it, is, it takes a while to do that. Um, also, there will be stuff like pendants and luxurious packaging and um, statues that we said are going to be kickstarter exclusive 
there still are Kickstarter exclusives that are cheaper on they were cheaper on Kickstarter, but we didn't get as many orders, so we have excess of all these items, so we kind of have to sell them somehow. So you will notice them on sale there as well in limited quantities, just on the quantities we promised you on Kickstarter. And once they're gone, they're gone. That's yeah, okay. so we're not making any more. The luxurious packaging we have about three to four hundred left because we need to order a thousand at least and we only sold 600 of them so you must understand that we can't just you know order a thousand and have 400 of them lying around so we kind of have to sell them unfortunately uh, but as we promised to kickstarter backers they're expensive more expensive in the shop than they were in kickstarter so you guys got the best deal possible Sounds like fucking Theresa May, the best deal. It's the, the only deal. It's the this, best deal. We're going to leave the European Union. Let's just not go there. This is, this is a Brexit. This is disguised yes, Brexit. Oh, I was hoping shop you means I was hoping shop. You wouldn't hear that one word. Shop <laughs> means My shop. Precious. Have you seen the. Uh, yes. It's <laughs> yes, shop means shop. We're delivering the shop as we asked. It's the best shop in the world. It's the only shop. Uh, so it's all there. And it's not just for local people. Yeah. And that thing, <laughs> it's also one thing we need to mention that uh, all the orders that will be placed on the shop will be delivered a month after. We aim to ship them a month after all the Kickstarters have been shipped. So basically, we prioritize the delivery of the Kickstarter backers first. So once your, your orders are out of the door, we can then focus on orders on the shop. So again, we're not prioritizing shop just because people pay more money there we prioritizing kickstarter backers because you're making this possible exactly. so with, without so. them pledges would not be here now so yeah so again ask all the questions you have about the shop as well uh, we have a shipping calculators there on on the website which will charge you the amount that you need to be charged for the stuff you want uh, you can add multiple items to your basket uh, the downloads um, this will be interesting for those who asked for lossless. Uh, you will receive, uh, when you buy the downloads on in the shop, you will be able to download uh, the albums in FLAC Black and, and MP3. MP3. Yeah. And anything um, else possibly that you know, we yeah. need to do. So. Uh, they, they will be accessible in your account on the shop, so please create an account when you check out. Uh, you know, so obviously these will be available on Spotify and no all major players there as well but if you if you like to have mp3 and flac we believe you should have that option you will be able to do it through the account so there you go we're confirming it that you will have your flac option there to download um now we have some questions coming through these are not related to the shop yet but mercy where is eckard born he sounds european oh gosh um mid-european yes yes uh eckhart um i can't remember exactly where i said it was it's all it's all in the notes somewhere but yes he was he was born in a mid-european country i think on the border of what became poland um, um i'd have to consult the notes to be exact on that but yes that's where his accent um w would have evolved um yeah an old guy and of course he was he was out of the game for a couple of hundred years so his accent didn't have time to change <laughs> he didn't get updated in the last couple of centuries so yeah basically um eckhart is still the mentality of um, a medieval uh, alchemist um so his speech patterns are the same even the, the his use of language is the same that hasn't updated and changed um so he's a, he's a walking living fossil uh, <laughs> Uh, right, so we have the shop question here, uh, which I'm I'm able to answer is will the shop at us uh, will the shop accept prepaid gift cards as well? Unfortunately, no. We only have credit debit card with Stripe and PayPal, or you can pay with credit and debit card through PayPal as well. So we, we think that pretty much covers. Yeah, I, I think if the um, I mean from looking at the website at the the, the shop. If the pre prepaid cards have Visa, MasterCard, or Mem Express on them, I'm sure they could be used in that respect. Um, but the key issue here is that they they say Visa, MasterCard, and yeah. Mem Express. So basically, all the major credit cards accepted. PayPal is accepted. Yeah. So go for it. With PayPal as well, you can also, without having to create um, an account, you can actually use pay uh, use PayPal as a checkout and you in. in and pay as a, um, a guest using your credit card. So, you know, it's quite versatile 
Um, there's some versatile options in, in being able to kind of fulfill the payment requirements. Um, we just got the, um, oh, David Jones is definitely interested in the sheet music. Yeah, you can buy that in the shop. Uh, you can get the um, Dark Angel Symphony um, in a luxurious package sheet music. Uh, we don't have the packaging available for you to see just yet, but it's going to be, he's obsessed with luxurious stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> Will that be available soon as well? Is that done? It's, it's, already it's done not done, well, obviously, where the music's written. Yes. Uh, well, that's, what, that's what I want to clarify. But yeah. yeah, I could possibly give it, you know, an idea. I mean, we could get some of the Angel of Darkness stuff, but just some random music and an orchestration and give you a rough idea of what, how it should right. be. I think that's right. what we should do, we, you know, we should look at our options. Yeah, we'll look into that. Yeah. Uh, how long does an item get shipped and arrive to one's home? Well, uh, we aim to ship them in January 2020, as I said earlier. Um, how soon? Well, it all depends really where you live. Uh, we will be using the shipping method you're paying for, you can select whether you want tracked, signed, economy, whatever. It's all available for you there, depending on your country. Uh, so it depends where you live. I would imagine Americans will receive it, for example, within two weeks. Everyone else within three, maybe. Yeah. I, I can imagine three to five days in UK and European. Definitely. And then, probably oh, probably within yeah, two, two days. days yeah, yeah, two days within Europe. Um, two, three days, five max, depending which part of Europe. But America up to I would say ten work up to ten working days would be kind of a realistic kind of estimation. Uh, can we use the discount code over multiple orders? Yes, you can. There is no limit on the amount of times you can use that code, but it's gonna end on January second. So as long as you use it by then, oh, we just got a, um, I believe. No, fossil. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, I get that. I know. Yeah, I, I know you did. I didn't deliberately. Um, so yeah, um, we got the question from Murti here. Have you ever thought of doing things with your unused Angel of Darkness ideas, like writing a novel with um, character names change? I imagine this is because of IP. Oh, character names change. Uh, that's an interesting, an interesting suggestion. That I was discussing this with somebody recently. Um, it would seem such a blatant ripoff that I, I haven't really considered it. Uh, in any detail, but it was it was muted at one point. That yeah, you sort of continue the um, um, basically the same sort of characters um, and continue the adventures as I would have seen them. Um, I've also been asked, would I be interested in in writing the novelization of the games that would have come along? Um, I guess my answer to that is, if the if the offer was right and the money was right, I would I would certainly consider doing that, or I might consider co-writing it with somebody. Um, there would be a lot of work there, and uh, oh, I've got all the notes and all the information, so it wouldn't be a matter about creating the it's story. Just I've been it's just, the opportunity to have the time to do, do that, you know. It, it's yeah, like, it's moulding it, putting it into shape, and, and getting it sent forward. But of course, there would be the copyright problem there. But so um, that's why they ask about yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. No, I, that would be that would be a little too a little too devious. Um, but the my own project, the the Shadow Histories. Um, a lot of the ideas I had for the Shadow Histories, um, I transferred and mutated and changed to use in Angel of Darkness. So there are similarities between that there. So if you were to look up the Angel of Darkness novels on, on, um, on Kindle uh, and you read those, you'd see some similarities there as well. But they were, they were written and established before I did the Angel of Darkness. Um, and there, but there are similarities because I'm interested it's in the your, same thing. It's your style, isn't it? No, yeah, it's yeah. my style. It's my sort of areas of interest. So, yeah, I, have I answered that question? Oh, you did, yes, did yeah. very well. Yes, okay. okay. <laughs> I would like to read on it. Sorry, uh, it's fine. Um, the shop will be live for a few months at least. We don't have a set day of closing it anytime soon. We believe it will be running for years yeah. Yeah, yeah probably permanently Definitely. but some of the items will not be available at all times so if you want to ensure you have them just get them now obviously we have a limited stock of like statues and things yeah, like that yeah limited stuff once they're gone they're gone the other stuff which can be ongoing will be ongoing but there will be other things added as well over time so, so you genuinely expect to be selling things right throughout the whole of the year uh, perpetually yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah it's, uh, like I say it's, it's yeah, the Kickstarter stuff will, that could go in a day, could go in a year, could yeah, go in two yeah, years, where yeah. it depends, but once it's gone, it's gone. But yeah, things like the um, the posters, t-shirts, 
um, CDs, vinyl, DVDs, that kind of thing. That can just that's ongoing. So it's going to be a busy year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, because yeah. them funds that I said I said earlier they'll be used towards. Yeah. you know, especially in this year, um, or, or the sort of mid early to mid twenty nineteen will be used to you know enhance the project yeah. and make things You'll a little writing bit like crazy people will be making <laughs> models and figures like crazy absolutely yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. scribbly scribbly <laughs> um right so oh right it's a weird question there i'm not gonna read it sorry <laughs> <laughs> not even gonna do we get to see that after yeah. That? yeah yeah no, no, i will no, read... it's all my own hair <laughs> I, will, I will read it <laughs> later on <laughs> i'll read it later on the first thing we need to show is uh right so what we have here is the official playstation magazine oh, yeah. Uh, which is out on the 18th of December, so the, on the Tuesday. Um, it's Game of the Year thingy that they have. Mm. And the Dark Angel Symphony is getting an entire page dedicated for it. There's a quick interview with Peter about stuff. So collectors, looking, um, talking to you here, make sure to buy it. Uh, this is how the cover looks like. Uh, so yeah. That's on the sale. You can get it, get that uh, shipped worldwide as well. Just look up how to buy official PlayStation Magazine UK uh, with a ship, ship it world, worldwide. But you want magazine with this cover on it. Make sure you buy this particular cover because there's different variations and different issues and stuff like that. So this is the one you want if you want that to get from it. when Ash? What was the date of that? Eighteenth of December. Eighteenth. Is it likely that that cover could be different? No, uh, in different countries. No, no, it's going to be in different countries. We're not featured in only right. in UK. So okay. this is why you need okay. this particular right. cover. Uh, I know there is official PlayStation Magazine USA and stuff like that. You want UK edition this one. Okay. So there you go. Just in case you would like to have it. Um, oh, I'd like, like to have it. Would you like to have it, Pete? I want it. Yeah. Uh, would you like to have it, Ash? I I already pre-ordered mine. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, I, I think I'll sign it. mine to myself. Yes, <laughs> that's a good idea. Get you to sign it. Uh, They'll devalue. You don't my signature. <laughs> uh, Merti, were you thinking about writing a story for anyone to capture Lara to create a replica of her so she'd um, ever get genetically modified as a Nephilim? That's interesting. Uh, I didn't certainly see her being uh, genetically modified as a Nephilim, but. Um, I've been very interested in her genetic background and where she comes from. Again, in a, this, this has been explained in a, a lot of notes that have appeared, uh, many of them on Tomb of Ash. Um, are you listening? No. Yes. No, 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 no. Is anybody out there listening? <laughs> no. So, no, um, the, 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 the future story of, of uh, the Angel of Darkness uh, follow-on games would have explored um, Lara's background, her genetic background, her genetic lineage, and once again, at the at the risk of saying this, um, I was always very interested in the Wald Newton world of Philip Jose Farmer, uh, where he created a, a concept where a lot of the heroes that we know today are actually real heroes, and they all came from um, uh, forebears who were near. A meteorite that landed in 1795 I think it was at a place called Wald Newton and because of their genetic mutations all their um, their subsequent uh, children and, and generations had uh, particular bloodlines that were very adventurous and I like that idea and if you get a good idea you know steal it as much as possible and I was going to explore that idea as being part of Lara wouldn't be part of the Walt Newton universe, but she would be part of um, a, a bigger universe as part of the Angel of Darkness one. And there would be questions about what exactly was her lineage? Where did she come from? Uh, what was it that was so special about her? And of course, Curtis. Um, what is it about their lineage that takes them into those kind of adventures and always draws them to the, to the obscure and the <laughs> white of water? All right, I'll shut up. I'll shut up. <laughs> that was his cue. Yeah. <laughs> he was going like that. He was digging like that. No, 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 carry on, Matty. Yeah. Are you done? I, I think I've done. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm going to soak for five minutes now. Uh, someone asked. Um, where can you get the black cat that's on the table? So the dog which is Anubis and the cat, which is Bastet. I got them both from the British Museum. You can order them online, but that's not related to our shop. We're not going to have them in our shop. Um, and this is from Home Store, 75p. 
They should pay us money for that. <laughs> uh, who would you like to see uh, play Lara? Um, well, probably Jo De Jong because they wanted her on our concert and our recordings. That we, which we still could happen, you know, if our shop kicks off really well. Um, but what do you think? Yeah, I think that's definitely a possibility. Um, I, I can't remember her name now. It, it just scares me every time somebody, every time I come to mention her name. I forget it. So is it somebody much. who's done Lara before? Or no, no, not? not at all. No, um, I always just think she looks like a typical Lara. She has that complete uh, like everything. About, actress, no, she. Uh, let's think. The name will come to me. Um, she. Sorry, you, you, watch, you, you just, just you take hard. time. We'll just. I'm we'll, just waffling like you. You know, okay. learn from the master. <laughs> <laughs> they. Um, she's. She. She did celebrity with Big Brother and Big Brother recently. Um, and she's married to. A, not that I watch it. Um, for, forced to. Oh, what That's she what called man. Anyway, yeah, it's her that does that. She just looks so much like a standard. And do you know that? Can she act? Can she? I, I would assume so. I mean, I, I what don't was she know, doing on, on Big She was. Road? She was the. Um, yeah, she was the. Um, nine's gone blank. Presenter. Presenter. Oh, yeah, right, very good presenter. presenter yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna have to Google the name. Yeah. Come on, you, yeah. just carry on. Yeah. Who would you like to be, Lara? Um, uh, oh, the person you were just saying. I mean, I, I'm telling you, I don't watch it, so <laughs> but, I'll content. just I'll just do as I'm told here. Yeah. yeah. Um, Notice right. I didn't yawn at any time. I didn't Pete yawn. I was white and water with my yeah. headphones. Uh, is there a schedule as far as shop updates, or will there be a Kickstarter update emails to let us know when the new stuff is in stock? Now, uh, the updates will be posted on social media, so just add us to your notification list to be the first to know. We're not going to be sending Kickstarter emails just because we don't really want to bombard you guys with those who are not interested to make any more purchases from us uh, but social media definitely yes it, there could be a newsletter as well update but but not kickstarter one there could be a kickstarter update when we have like lots of stuff uh thrown in uh but as per um every item definitely no and no there is no schedule it will just go when we have it ready for it just enjoying yourself there it's right you were talking when i was talking i'm just i'm just, I'm just upstaging you <laughs> Oh yes, yes, yes. Who is that? Emma Willis. Yeah, that was my vote as well. Yes, yes. I don't know who she is. It doesn't look like her at all, to be honest. Get off. Okay, fine. I'm done. <laughs> no, it's a very personal thing. It is. Yeah, she does. Every time I look at nothing to do with the Laura. It's them big eyes. Yeah. So. Uh, Murty, have you ever read comics? Um, comics version of the angel of darkness um i started to try and collect them at the time that we were, i was doing angel of darkness i i got to see one copy one issue um and it was nothing to do with the with the story yeah. i wrote at all they just took for some reason they took the name and wrote a completely different story so i it's wasn't too awful. i wasn't too motivated to, to to get the rest of the thing but up to that point and beyond that point i was collecting a lot of the lara croft comics I've got some really great ones, and some of the covers for those early ones are some of my, my absolute favourite artwork. And for, for Lara. Yeah. yeah, yeah, fantastic artwork, really, really cool stuff. Not uh, the Angel of Darkness, though. That was awful. No, true. no, no. It's a real shame. <laughs> I mean, why would they do that? You know, they, they, there was a story. They just couldn't be bothered to find out what the story no. was, and they wrote their own thing. It was Have very, the very disappointing. Have you read the Amulet of Power, which is supposed to be pre Angel of Darkness, mm. but it was. Yeah, it's a vomit on pages. Well, I, 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 didn't, I didn't pursue rush it. it out, get it out quickly, you know. Well, it's a shame because they, they, they were doing the, the previous comics to that were really well done. Uh, they were, you know, well They still had different stories. They, her biography was changed. That's when she first became an orphan, even though she wasn't right, really okay. in yes. the game. Yes. Uh, so that's the comic books to blame for yeah. the first. Well, I guess a lot of people have got their version of what they'd like to see as the origins of Lara and everything else. So, yeah, all, all power to them. But don't call something the Angel of Darkness if it's not. And it wasn't. So, yeah, very, very disappointing. Um, yeah. Peter, uh -huh. are you excited to finally start working on the Dark Angel Symphony? Absolutely, yes, comrade. The, the ideas, I've, I've said this in previous um, videos and live streams that yeah, just the ideas that I have for this have mm. been going round and round, you know, for quite some time now, like 15 to 20 years. Um, it's about time you started doing something worthwhile, it is, it's actually it? and got get, the awesome. get them sorted yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I can't wait. Um, yeah. I know exactly what I need to do, what I want to do, you know, I've got, I'm, I am going to be working with Richard Niles um, at the moment on a limited basis. We're 
relying on this shop to help yeah. bring him in a little bit more. Um, it's not great having got to that point though as well. It we, is. We know now yeah. it's going to happen. You're going to do it. it. Is, We're yeah. going to hear that music. It it's is, fantastic. Yeah. And I could pretty much realise, you know, what, what's yeah. been going on in my head for a long time. Yeah. You know, anyone who writes music, um, yeah, you can write a tune in half a day, but you know, to really kind of realise what it is you want to do, you need to kind of let the dust settle mm. um, and then let your ideas kind of like flourish on top of what you already have. And that's, you know, it takes a long time to make music happen really and yeah you can you can be up against pressures and this that the other but to do something properly you really need that little bit of time to kind of come up with the original idea and then for your, your brain to kind of start working around these extra ideas which would help kind of bring it to the next level which is what's going to happen with this so i guess since kickstarter closed i mean i know i know you know the shops continue and everything but you've not had much time to do a lot of the music a lot of it's been arranged all the arrangements for all this and at the moment it's it's a case of deciding which piece of music i'm going to use right i need to send what i've got over to richard niles right. and then we need to work out and you can start order. working on that yes now. you can do yes. that now right i okay, can, so I, I can, can start making a start i can, I can get that out, the basic outlines so right. the basic outlines are the yeah. Um, templates for each for the orchestral elements anyway at right. least kind of set up and started but i'll not be to write the music fully until i kind of get rich and yeah. back, do his work but it's in motion now it's, it's actually started moving forward it's it's not written but no it's, no it's the pre-written yeah um yeah pre-composition side of things that i'm doing at the moment i'm busy yeah. with it you know what i need to make this happen um you know i've obviously invested in some libraries and a couple of bits of software here and there yeah. and i'm obviously looking at the music and, and and kind of saying okay this is the track of what and this is what i want to do yeah and so it must be a huge relief to have got to this because i mean when i saw that we'd broken the you know we'd, we'd broken the target I thought, oh the relief was the pressure's on now. i can't imagine how pete's feeling <laughs> yeah it was it was quite overwhelming it was just yeah, um, yeah. i was literally up to the, the very last second yeah hit and refresh you know on the phone making yeah. sure and um i just it, it went from like 60 at one point up to 70 and it was just yeah. like whoa you know where's this yeah and happen? once again thank you to everybody who, yeah. who contributed to make that possible we should so. uh, give a shout out to one of our sponsors yes co-design.com who made a fantastic contribution of four and a half thousand pounds oh i didn't last know that. yeah they told me they were giving me that, so they've given it to you instead. They preferred me to you. Oh right, okay, all right. I can't imagine why. That's anyway, a, yeah, well, well done. that's the thing. I was looking. Well done, I, was, Cor. I was looking. I was looking at the app, and you know, it was sixty five or something, and then somebody just jumped at sixty nine. I'm like, yeah, that was an absolutely thank you incredible. Thank you, so yes. we will promote your website, yeah. which is coredesign.com, which is pretty yes. much about the yes. whole thing. Yes. We will um, contact all our sponsors in due yeah. course to uh, and send my four and a half thousand directly to me uh, this time. Yeah, don't don't get it mixed up. <laughs> uh, we just had our first order coming through. We actually have another one pending payment, but this one is currently wow. processing from Julie. She bought something. I hope she doesn't mind me reading it out. Um, it could be a gift for a loved one, so be careful. Uh, she bought a pendant, which is Iris. And she bought a Curtis Trent T-shirt, mm -hmm. uh, the signature collection that Lara Titova made. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, yeah. uh, Lara Titova. Yeah. So uh, we remove uh, limited. Um, so one of our limited edition irises is sold, so it's gone now. We only have thirty nine left. We will be able, we able to uh, jiggle the stock for the pendants um, because we we agreed to order certain amount of units rather than each of the units so therefore if you see that currently the stock is 40 40 40 for each of those but at some point it may, may be zero for scarab so we'll have to take i don't know 10 from each of quantities of those and put them into scarab and things like that so but overall the quantities of them will not change yeah say for instance there's 100 and, and somebody orders 90 scarabs there'll be 10 left of the other so space there's 100 so once the 100's gone that's it yeah, I hope I explained. Move well, I, did, I didn't understand that, that, but uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, question for Murti: In hindsight, do you feel the generic lineage plot point making Lara who is she undermines the human spirit? Uh, I probably read it without information. Um, do you think or feel the genetic lineage plot point making Lara who she is undermines the human spirit? Uh, about her absolutely not no um, there's nothing unhuman about it or inhuman it's just 
I mean, there are people who are um, incredibly gifted um, in certain in many areas. You know, think of uh, athletes and gymnasts and sportsmen and mountain climbers. These are these are people who are they're not superhuman. They're just human, but their powers have been augmented. They've developed themselves. It's more like that. It's more like um, an augmented human uh, capability that, that I was thinking of as the bloodline characteristic. Yeah. So they're not they're not superhuman. It's not going into that area at all. It's just people who have developed the abilities that they've got to a very very high standard, like Pete, um, and like myself. Uh, but <laughs> you know, only in athletic and outdoor pursuits uh, <laughs> methods. Of course. <laughs> Perhaps not Ash. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I better retrack on that, hadn't I? Yeah, yeah definitely Ash. He, he's he is a superhuman. Yeah, yeah. Well, you okay. know, to what he's put. But no, it's not. It's not. It's not it, taking away anything of the human element and the human spirit at what, all. What Ash has done for this project, it definitely. It's, I it's don't have a beyond. human element anymore after this. Project. No, no. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's pretty superhuman to people who are ordinary. I mean, to, we, we, to, we to, to his credit, he was, he worked on this shop yesterday for nine hours. Was outright, so you know it's yeah, it's yeah, and it's it, still it's, not it's right. easy for yeah, it's still not right. It's still got a lot to do. It, it's just everyone gets to see it for what it is, but yeah, I think a lot of people forget yeah. that. You know, the, well, there's the, so much work goes on in the background. I mean, phenomenal amount of work. I know because I get told I don't do any of it. I just get told about it, but uh, no, phenomenal amount of work. So uh, now talking about the shop, uh, there is a few things that coming to it. Um, one of the major things will be the Curtis Trends Diary, which Mert is working on. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't have a set date for it just yet because Mert is slow on working. I am in winter. I slow down like a tortoise, but yes. But we yes. hopefully to get it by spring. Yes. Yeah. So we will have it available for you. Yeah, you'll be able to look at what it is, what the content is. Yes. I mean, I've already shown a few little pages. We're not going to show the con the full content, but we will mm. probably mm. Um, send it to printers in spring yeah. time and you'll yeah. be able to see the cover of it and everything so you like see that. the finished product as yeah. it will be printed yeah. yes. yes so yes. we will we yes. will be selling it in springtime hopefully maybe okay. sooner it depends on this yeah i'm very excited about that very excited it's just that yeah in winter i slow down quite a lot and, yeah. um, so that'll be available i'm, I'm lucky i'm here today <laughs> <laughs> so that'll be available in the shop he will sign them all yeah yeah uh, really yes, how many copies <laughs> We we'll think about a uh, hundred, maybe two. Oh, I'll sign that many, yeah, yeah. maybe more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. see. Uh, so yeah. that's coming. That's one thing that's coming soon. Um, another thing is obviously we're gonna add more t-shirts that we couldn't, we weren't able to add them just yet. Majority is there. Forty-four added. We need another. We've got quite a few, haven't we? We started with about six or seven. Uh, we need. Yeah. We we have about uh, seventy-eight because we have twenty-six t-shirts variation but then we have 26 unisex 26 women's 26 um vests uh, but overall we currently added 44 so the majority are there we still have uh, some to go and obviously we add them one by one so you can imagine how difficult that is but it will appear at some point these, so these are the ones checking. with the um whose artwork is on this La it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just various it's both ah. lara titova that signature collection yeah. we have yes. Ina's yeah, artwork yeah. lara we and have, Ina. oh that's yeah. a great we also have yeah. the um yeah, what you call it, um, oh, Curtis yeah. Trends, um, yeah. yeah, like that one, uh, stuff like that. So, yeah, uh, it's all will be there. Everything you saw on Kickstart in terms of t shirts will be there eventually. So, right. just uh, keep ref keep uh, checking it out, yeah. yeah, because there's no limit on the amount of t shirts you can order. So, just keep checking it once in a while. Uh, another thing that's coming to the shop, it's going to be a brand new category that's not on it just yet is the retro merchandise from Merti, which donated kindly to us. We we're gonna raise lots of money, hopefully. So if you remember these um, statues from back in the day, uh, they're brand new, mint in the box, as you can see, they've never been opened. Well, they were open, but they were never like on display or anything. They're yeah, brand yeah. new in mint condition. They've, they've lived um, in the box. Which is important. impossible important. to find as far as I know on eBay. Same with this one. Um, I managed only to find a very battered version of that with a her ponytail was like chopped off so I had to glue that together mm -hmm. but I was really happy I found finally found it but this is brand new so you will be able to purchase all that in our shop the ponytail is well. not chopped off on that one just no. to be absolutely clear yeah, 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 yeah they all they all new unless essentially on, on, on so, less yeah, yeah. Yeah. so they're all pretty new all great so if you ever wanted to have them 
this is your chance to shop however we, sh we should point out that these will be significantly expensive that you probably will expect them although if you ever bought limited uh, not limited uh, rare retro gaming merchandise from eBay before you probably won't be shocked uh, but you must remember we're using these funds to pay for Richard Niles potentially for Tina and Julie as well mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we can afford Tina yeah. Julie for this yeah. one song. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, we would like them for more songs. So it's to yeah. keep moving the project along. It's anything yeah. to keep moving the project along. Yeah. Make so it that's as powerful coming. and complete as possible. Yeah. So that will be yeah. uh, with you soon. There's also be things like wallets, yeah. uh, official as well. So all the lots of official retro. Who donated those? those? You. Oh, I did. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. yes. So that's oh, coming. Oh, that's right. that. <laughs> There's going to be bags as well, uh, messenger bags with some of the tags, some of oh, yeah, the shoulder there. bags and backpacks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah you some can see tags, those. some without tags, but they are new. So that's coming. The pictures so, of those are on the on the on the shop site. Right? Not yet. Not yet. But that's coming. Be. That's yeah, coming soon. They're, they're so, really nice yeah. items. I really would have liked to have kept those, but. Ashen people they forced, they forced, forced them up in the yeah. No, we, you didn't have a choice. All at all. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's coming as well. Uh, there's going to be a, um, what was it like a shower gel bundle? Was yeah, it? yeah. So yeah. Like, with deodorant and stuff, Lara Croft one from nineties. Yeah, I don't think he ever used those. <laughs> no, no, they're unused as well. <laughs> the, 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 pa the packaging looks a bit bad. That's my family keep commenting. <laughs> Why don't you use that bloody shower gel? You know, use it, use it. The packaging looks a bit damaged, not, as in you know, yeah. it was a bit squished. But the contents were not used. Yeah, yeah. just clear up. <laughs> right. Murti, have you ever saw the girl with dragon tattoo? Have I ever saw the girl with dragon tattoo? The, the, so. the, Is that the, a Japanese? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, there was a question about that, so because you never right. saw it, seen no. it on Reddit. Do, it doesn't ring a bell. So we no. Um, that's very big to ready to start it up. Yes, it's a very massive one. They're all, all quite big. These two. Uh, how many inches you'd say this is? Eight, Eighteen. It, yeah, it's about <laughs> 18 to 20. Uh, does it not have the size on, uh, on the bottom? <laughs> well, this is nine nine yeah. inches, so yeah, it's going to be it's going to be, size, to be yeah. double about 18 to yeah, 20, pretty yeah, much yeah. double. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. and it's yeah. also 1997 made, so it's really yeah, yeah, they're about they're about this 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 high. Yeah, should we just take one out? And... Ooh, yeah, well, you ooh. get polystyrene foam over everything then. Yeah, that's no, it's um, I think I already took them out to a quality test them before. Sweet drops in the Drop. <laughs> By the way, guys. We well, you can all buy a fragment of what was a, a, a Lara Croft statue at Church Shelley. <laughs> By the way, we're expecting rain at some point during this stream. So if you hear yeah. weird noise, that's the rain. Yeah. None of us is farting. That's murky. Uh, yeah, so just. It's a. It's. it's um... Yeah. Oh, ouch. <laughs> there we there go. Okay. Yeah, let's get out. I thought you said I am. Um, Ponytail? Was... No, mine was. As in my statue. Sure. Mm. Look at her, she's brand new. There we are. Oh, pretty. Yeah, yeah. Not not been in the daylight until now. No, well, this isn't daylight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she is significant. Revolve higher. around. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, uh, put, put that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's about 15, 16, I'd say. I don't do inches, yeah. you see, I do centimeters, but mm. yeah, mm. so brand new, as you can see, not chopped off ponytails, tail, mm. Mm. so yeah, brand new, and the, uh, another one is in the same, we have two of these, two of those, yeah, two of those, and one of the bigger ones from the tomato ones, is so, that where she's holding the guns like uh, that, to the side, yeah. oh, this to the side, yeah, right. okay. so we have those, yeah. we have different, we have a angel duck with bubble heads as well, so, uh, you'll be able to get that in the mm. shop at some point. Um, but yes, again, once again, people will be able to see all these, won't they, on the, on yes. the shop? And yes. See, see yes. what it is that they're actually... And Ooh. you probably saw them before anyway. It's just the fact is that you never... It's really difficult, if not impossible, to get them in this condition these days yeah, yeah. because people obviously bought them in the 90s. They were in this place and dropped them and mm. stuff like that. I used to get loads of stuff at the time uh, because we could get it uh, get it cheap and deliver to it all when is it <laughs> we could get it delivered to co we didn't have to send away it yeah. could be delivered so I'd, I'd go in on the Monday and there'd be a you know various packages and 20 uh, packages of uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> more rucksacks yeah more more uh, more wallets and more statuettes there's a technical question do you know what engines 
uh, did they use on early stages of development no. for the Tomb Raider 6? <laughs> no? I think Maya was used for the all work. And yeah, that's not the engine though. That's nah, uh, but somehow mm -hmm. incorporated the. Uh, the engine, I, I think I know the answer for that. Uh, the engine was actually custom made by Core Design. Uh, it was later on changed to what then became the um, anniversary edition of Free Running. Yeah. So that was modified into that. It was all developed in Maya. Mm -hmm. um, Maya 7.5, I believe, was 7.1, one of those. So not 7, but it was 7 point something. Uh, it was great. They had a special level editor for the Angel of Darkness. It's called level editor, even though it's really nothing like level editor because it's a special, essentially a plugin for Maya. So you need to know Maya how to you to create environments and stuff like that. But it was some sort of easier interface for people who, from core design, who never actually worked in PS2 environment before. They used 3ds Max to create renders and models before, so Maya was a bit difficult. So they created them. Um, level editor for them to ease the process and then it would export them into the game files that we use so essentially i don't know the name of the engine but it it was not engines it was one engine uh, at early stages and later stages but yeah it it was core design own development thing isn't it annoying when you ask a technical question like that you get such a poor answer you know? <laughs> drink piss <laughs> do you know what it is though he knows more than we do are you well i think most people know more than i do now <laughs> probably because i'm young and i don't forget things oh. yes yes i've forgotten more than you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's a good comeback uh peter morgau and curtis strand are they getting their theme they absolutely are 100 we did confirm it last stream but it. now you're making promise to the this sample yes 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 that'd be fantastic yes. to hear i i yeah yeah it's, that, that'll it's, be worth it's a must it, it if it doesn't happen then shoot me so that'll be worth me continuing drinking preservative fluid for the next couple of years until it yeah it gets done <laughs> yeah so we will um i really hope curtis will be more like rock and roll you know like you know get mm. extra that, that can, that can hear some guitar like yeah. it still needs to be quite it, yeah. it needs to be dark it needs to have a lot of like, yeah. like kind of banjo harmonica <laughs> well, and a fiddle, yeah. <laughs> bagpipes. Yeah. Oh, but of course, yeah. There's the there's the Navajo. Uh, he's got Navajo blood in him as well. So it's right, some okay. kind of some. India, there's going to be a lot. Of, okay, yeah, there's going yeah. to be a lot of ethnic percussion in there. I can hear that. I can hear it. I'm, I'm glad it's your decision. I'll, I'll I'll like, <laughs> you just need to come in one day when I'm writing it. And yeah, say, yeah. That's kind yeah, of like yeah, you know. Yeah. So we'll sit yeah. one day and we'll make sure. Yeah, you know, we'll kind of be no, on the right track. Exactly. That's that's awful. I don't like that. At all. Oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's what you do would time. it be possible to get a counter on the shop to see how much money it raised for you guys to post on social media? Unfortunately, at this stage, no. Uh, that's simply because we're using different payments methods, so we can't really we can't make them talk really to each other. Yeah. Uh, we might be we will be definitely posting like milestones. Uh, obviously, if we reach like first thousand, every ten thousand, we yeah. kind of, probably every thousand yeah. at yeah. this rate. Uh, every, like, if we will get a milestone of things, you'll be obviously the first to know. Uh, backers will get an update if we reach stretch goal one. For example, obviously for stretch goal one, we need what ninety thousand. Yeah. We already have seventy. So once we raise twenty k through the shop. Um, you'll get an update that yes, definitely we have Richard now doing the whole thing. I know that Richard, I know that Peter is taking, um, rejiggling them because I know that uh, Peter obviously left his job now and to work solely on the Dark Angel Symphony. So the money that was supposed to support him during this period of time, whilst he is working on the music, he's taking a pay cut to that to uh, give those extra money to, to Richard, Richard Nelson, but with the hope that this shop will keep the money kind of coming in yeah so but the benefit of doing that is going to be yeah, phenomenal absolutely, isn't it absolutely, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I definitely think i mean i'm quite i'm quite happy to so he will be on minimum wage essentially to yeah, ensure yeah. that you know we get more richard involved in this i just wanted to yeah. i know you that, don't that, want me to say this but no that makes sense yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm on it. no wage don't forget but i'm getting four and a half thousand from core at some i've point, already spent that uh ash are you gonna wear a christmas hat <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> gonna ruin my hair. <laughs> um, Peter, were there any musics uh, made specially for to make the level like the Sanctuary of Fire or Neptune Fall in the Angel of Darkness? 
Um, the way they <laughs> asked the question, yeah, <laughs> it's ruined. <laughs> The, the the music for Angel of Darkness was was it was kind of written um, quite a long time before the game was released and finalized. So a lot of the music here and that is kind of early stage kind of music. Mm. Um, but you know what we did with the orchestral records is we kind of coupled that with a, uh, with some synth sounds and kind of like you know t- took loops or took section um, sections pitched them down just to kind of work with what what we were seeing as we progressed with the project. So um, we never kind of like had the full game and then wrote the music. We kind of wrote, mu- <coughs> wrote the full music and then the game kind of got developed. So mm-hmm. it was kind of a precursor than a, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But, it, you know, most of the stuff that we wrote tend to work in most of the levels. We did need some specific, like I say, we would just chop up elements of the orchestral music and and combine it with, you know, make it, make it hybrid with some synth stuff, you know. But, um, yeah, it was kind of more let's work with what we've got than make some with what we have that makes sense does that make sense yeah, yeah, I, must yeah, be the sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I understood it <laughs> you understand I don't get all the it. numbers and the technical <laughs> stuff but yeah what's the relations of Morgau and Matthias Vasari what's the relationship yeah uh, Morgau is his daughter um, she got one single name mention in, in the Angel of Darkness uh, I think it was part of a code um, but yeah, uh, he, uh, he was her, fa- her father um, and Matthias Vasily had been um, a rogue, uh, looks very Tartist member at one point. And what happened was he brought her up um, very much undercover uh, in secrecy. And rather like uh, Curtis Trent, she did have looks very Tartist training. But because Matthias Vasily um, was a rogue, looks very Tartist, he couldn't have access to a lot of the training equipment and. and techniques and styles and locations and so on, which are all a very important part of it. So she had a partial Lux Veritatis training. Um, and so, yeah, her, her background was was parallel to uh, Curtis's, but not the same, not the same by any means. And she, uh, like Curtis, she got fed up with the whole uh, Lux Veritatis uh, cabal battle stuff and went her own way. But her, her, her path went down a very much more self-damaging uh, route and she ended up uh, well, yeah. Look, uh, have a look at the uh, all the the history of Morgau that's on um, Tomb of Ash and and wherever else it appears. Yeah. Um, shop question: How long the shop will be up for, or is it just until everything is sold? We did talk about briefly before. Um, obviously, once limited edition items are gone, we're not gonna add them anymore. That's it. Stock gone, gone while the stock lasts. Everything else that's not limited, like T-shirts. And CDs and downloads, they will be there until we are able to physically ship them. Obviously, because we will be shipping them manually. Uh, t-shirts, in particular, will be obviously going to the post office and shipping them CD as well. Downloads, obviously, not a problem, but everything else. So it will depend how long we can carry on doing that. So uh, it's not going to close anytime soon. We can. Yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be ongoing. Yeah. So at, until the January 2020, at the very least, uh, then we'll see how it goes, basically. But uh, for limited edition items like pendants, the statues or luxurious packaging, um, or Curtis Trent's diary that's coming soon, or those merchandises that I showed you before, you know, those... And mugs, which we haven't mentioned yet. Oh yeah, mugs are coming as well. There's going to be another... That's... Thank uh, you. I was thinking, there was one more category, I keep forgetting which one. Mugs, yeah, there's going to be mugs as well available and mouse mats potentially. What, what's going to be on the on the mugs? Have you chosen the art? Picture your mug. Yeah. Sorry? Picture your mug. My mug. Mug on a mug. A mug mug. <laughs> a mug mug. Yeah, your mug though. Mona Pizza is going to be on mugs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's coming soon as well. But yeah, the shop will be running for quite a while and uh, while the stock lasts on them. When you add them to your cart, it reserves them for some minutes, by the way. So. If you worry that, you know, oh my God, there's one left. Uh, when you add it to your car, you secure it for a few minutes. So, mm. you know, it's not going to happen. That's going to charge you and we add out of stock. So you're not going to get it. No, when pretty you much, add it, you're, pretty much like you do when you book um, ticket, master. Ticket, ticket master. Yeah. yeah so it's yeah. Pretty, pretty much how you buy tickets. Yeah. Going back to the mug mug. <laughs> is it going to be this sort of artwork? Uh, that's going to be there. That's going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. On the mugs. Yeah. Yeah. All ah, right. Okay. It's going to be also more you can, Yeah. You can have the option. You can, yeah. I would imagine on the mugs, we'd probably be able to use the artwork, which is used okay. on the, um, okay. um, obviously on, on t-shirts. On t-shirts. Yeah. We'll yeah. have to kind of, yeah. 
because this has to be as much exposure as possible, doesn't it? Yes. I mean, to be able to to be able to own a, a part of, of some of the artwork yeah. that uh, yeah. Inner and, and, and Lara have done. Fantastic, Lara to tell yeah. yeah. And that brings us to Lara and Ina again, because uh, Lara and Ina will be looking to get, hopefully they're watching this, and hopefully that doesn't change what they mentioned previously, uh, that they will be um, going to UK in May for our Din Dins that we're hosting in Harvester in um, Pride Park. Uh, as I mentioned previously, I'm going to tell you more details about it very soon. So what we need now is to confirm uh, we're going to create a secret group on Facebook for our backers only for now. So every people who support us on Kickstarter will receive an invitation first for a couple of weeks or maybe a week. Um, so you'll be able to RSVP and because the way that Harvester gave us the deal is that you will be ordering food. Uh, so if you'd like to come over and not order food, that's fine. But we need to, uh, um, if you would like to come over and have dinner with us, you have to A, pre-order food, which will come in probably April when you'll be pre-ordering. B, you will need to pay a deposit, which I imagine will be five pounds per person. Deposit is, uh, is basically when you order food, that fiber will be taken off your bill. So you are, mm. like, you know, mm. you're depositing some money towards it. Because That's how the harvester works, unfortunately. Uh, we're not charging you money to attend the thing. You're paying for your own drink, you're paying for your own food, but you probably will be need, we will need to pay fiber per person for a deposit for to harvester to secure a big table. Uh, and that's and coming. When you say Ash coming and having a meal with us, who 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 is the us? I'd imagine you would want to come. But yes, I would like to come. Uh, I'd imagine uh, Peter Connolly will be there. We don't know, it's only his thing, this whole <laughs> thing. Uh, Ine and Lara will be there as well. Uh, they will be here for a couple of days what in about UK. You? I will consider. Yes, yes. Come on, make make the effort. Make I the will effort. actually tell you the date we're looking at. And Pride um, Pride Park. Yeah, yeah. Where is where? It? London. Um, Derby. Glasgow. Derby. Glasgow. Derby where Park. is it? It's in Derby. Are you asking a serious Darby. question? Oh, no, a serious oh. question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pride Park. Where Core Design used to be. You used oh, to. Oh, I used to work <laughs> there. I used to work there. Oh right. No, oh, I know, you know where that, that is. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're not harvesters at Pride Park. Harvester over the road, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Jesus right. fucking okay, Christ. Okay. He said there's what all our leaders are. Well, I'm just, he said, when, I'm, when I'm in doubt, I don't mind asking. If I don't like, where? See where what, I what I have to work with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're looking at May 25th, by the way. That's the date we're looking to uh, book Pride Parks at Harvester. So that's a Saturday. Uh, it's a Saturday. Uh, so look into flights and stuff like that. And now, don't purchase them until you get an invitation because when we get an invitation that's when we can secure a deposit we just need to have one more talk with the harvester to secure it yeah. we try to get mr grandis which is a tower next to old core design offices on 55 ashburn road however they are very very difficult to get a hold of yeah. they say they never received our emails mm -hmm. we called them we send an email as we were calling them they still say they don't receive it or well we'll talk to you later so it was m much more painful and more stressful we don't want to end up with you know with booking the place if we can't book the place then you know if we can't get past the yeah. first hurdle then it you know you just know there's going to be trouble ahead yeah. so we want to make yeah. sure this yeah get trouble go. at that stage you know there's going to be uh, trouble yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah so yeah. you know yeah. we don't want to end up with like yeah. last minute changing place and obviously yeah. we'll cancel and get obviously when you guys will book the flights and stuff like we can't afford that happening yeah. Yeah. that's going to be awful yeah so but Harvester was very forthcoming, so we will just we just and need to Harvester when we moved to Pride Park from Ashbourne Road, that was hammered. So it was it was just as yeah. it was used as, just as much as a support. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's a good, it was a good meeting point. Wasn't it was. It, it was yeah, quite yeah. big. Yeah, yeah. You and this will be open. This, this will be open to all all the backers. Just yeah. the, uh, not just the backers. Week. Anyone else? Oh, else. Oh, anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. But we will open an invitation to backers page. first. Ah, so right. Oh, so I can come. Yeah. Yeah. So backers will be booking first. Um, you will have to pay a fiber deposit. It will be going to us. We yeah. then put it, gave it to Kickstarters the yeah. whole sum yeah. in April, securing the big table or wow. maybe tables. Do you know that could be quite a riot, couldn't it? Could, could it be? be? Could, could be just be. an exclusively open. Or could be yeah. just five people, which it does. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I can't imagine that somehow. Yeah. Can't also, unfortunately, that. we were not able to secure hundred eighty thousand right away, so we had to drop Tatiana as our videographer, unfortunately. Um, 
Uh, but there's no reason now why, you know, the shop won't. There's no reason uh, it's still not, for we, us to get away with I don't think it, it will be done before the... Uh, no, I don't think so. By the yeah. time, I think what's going to happen is, um, if it is possible, you know, it needs to happen by a certain point because up until that point, we need to kind of decide whether we're all going to go with the orchestra route or whether we're going to continue, you know, doing stuff in my own studio. So I would probably say by March, April would be a safe point to understand yeah. whether we could take a good indication yeah. by that yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. So you will receive, backers will receive uh, information again, uh, uh, just like you did with a, your discount code. Uh, it was backer only update, by the way. No one but backers can see that update. Um, what's inside? So please don't share that code with anyone. You will receive similar. <laughs> Unless you go yeah, thousand. you will receive a similar update about the uh, that harvest at Pride Park as well. As soon as I just one more time confirm with them how much deposit they want. I assume it's going to be a five pound deposit per person. Um, it could be more. It could be less. Uh, but I, ju I will just confirm with them. Then you will receive the update on that. You will then can look at the menu. You can also pre-order food as well. I think they will require us to pre-order as well. But anyway, look out for the update. Backers will get it first, then we'll open to everyone else. Um, and we'll see how- Have Harvester specified a, um, a minimum number of people? No. Uh, I think there is a maximum of a certain amount that they can, they didn't say how much. We did say we expect at least 50 people. They were a bit like, oh, on Saturday, we will need deposit and we will need the pre-order yeah. food. So. They, they will need that reassurance. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, we, Saturday. Yes, yeah, so obviously we will need to okay. uh, keep you guys informed on that. Um, but yeah, mm. don't book your flights just yet. Don't book your train just yet. Just let us With sort it out. Yeah. It will be very soon. I imagine it will be before January. I will, mm. I will get to you. And so. where is this again? Derby. <laughs> Derby? <laughs> Where's Derby? Can I go? Uh, it's next <laughs> to the Derby know. train station. You'll be pleased to know. Uh, Peter, question. Um, what are your plans with the Tomato Chronicles and uh, VCI trucks as far as the arrangements go? They have very different style to other Tomato trucks, all almost techno-ish. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, that's definitely that's one that's kind of prominent at the top of my head. Um, it, it, it's still going to maintain that kind of techno aspect to it, but there is a lot of orchestral stuff in there too, so that'll be pretty much a hybrid, you know, there'll be the, you know, the, the drum loop. With the orchestral, uh, sorry, the synthetic sounds which kind of like come in um, intermittently, you know, as the track progresses. Plus, I'll kind of enrich the orchestra side of it, mm. so I'll just sound, um, I don't know why, Club of Death's come to mind, that kind of orchestral tech electronic um, hybrid. Mm. Full of rounded yeah, sound. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Do you do you envisage using unusual instruments or or sampled unusual instruments? I do. I mean, I, I think with definitely a, well, yeah. I think um, a lot of the music I wrote for the for all three have some sort of um, well, at least the first two anyway have some sort of ethnicity to it. Yeah. So I'm yeah. gonna you know employ rather than just kind of mimic mm -hmm. a, an Egyptian um, wind instrument. I'm gonna kind of find somebody who specialises in. Yeah. Kind of you know playing them type of instruments so we will see somebody's gonna do a lot of wind yeah 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 do you want to be employed to do this uh we need to uh, um give credit to tara natsev who is watching us and who is actually monitoring the social media and working currently because i'm obviously hosting these two here um she is our new videographer she's doing it for free um <laughs> Is that another genuine question? You know, sometimes you can't tell. Uh, I like to keep about him on, on, time. I like to keep him on the edge of the scene. In about an hour's time without medication, he's going to ask where he is. <laughs> and who we are. <laughs> what is Tomb Raider? Uh, yeah, so Terence will be doing a video documentary for us. It's going to be delivered free on YouTube, so you won't be able to, you don't need to pay anything for it. And also, it will be part of the DVD extras. Yeah, so when you order DVD... Uh, you get it on DVD, oh, that's good. Uh, that's good. No, on yeah. uh, the OST for the um, OST for the uh, Angel of Darkness yes. 5.1. Okay. Yeah, you'll get that. Okay. You'll, we'll get, you'll we'll have artwork making all the yeah. documentaries. Yeah. We'll, we'll have enough there to cover. You know. yeah. Yeah. This is why we hope Ina and Lara can make it here so we yes. can film them yes. and interview be great. them. Be great so to meet you guys. You guys. Really you are still alive by that point. If I'm still going, if I'm drinking enough preservative by that, embalming fluid, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. Jack <laughs> Daniels embalming fluid. I'm sure you will swap, swap buddies by then again. <laughs> that's what you do. Uh, Merti, you got the question actually. Did the whole dark theme idea came from your 
uh, from you for the game, or was it Adrian or someone else? Sorry, it was the whole dark theme for the Angel. The of dark Batman. theme. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, the actual story, the elements yeah. of darkness. No, that was very much my my um, part of my huge contribution to it. Um, I, I, um, I remember uh, Adrian when we were having our initial talk um, in about. Uh, June, June, something like that in, in 2000, um, he said they wanted to take it in a new direction. And I was saying, well, are you talking, uh, how new, you know, you're not talking science fiction or anything like that, obviously. So what are you talking about? Because you've got the archaeological stuff. And I started to talk about, well, what I was doing was I was representing some of the ideas I was currently writing for my own shadow history stuff. And, and was presenting some of the dark stuff and, and, and he his eyes lit up at that and he got he got rather interested in that so yes the, the, I brought the the sort of the dark element to it um, and I've said before I said in the last broadcast uh, we were choosing we were trying to choose a, a good name for it we put a uh, we asked for suggestions from the whole company everybody was <laughs> uh, making a lot of contribution silly ones rude ones funny ones genuine ones uh, we, we, we shortlisted those, sent those down to London, um, and it came back with one that we hadn't come up with, the Dark Angel, which, as we said before... It was, I came up with that one. Yeah, sorry? I came up with that one. No, I didn't. Um, uh, so we were, so we were presented with that as the title that was going to be used, and it yeah, it's a good title, it was a good title, but it reflected what I was outlining, what we were trying to do. We were trying to go into a, definitely a darker area, you know, a more realistic, darker area. So the answer to that was a big, a big yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, actually, we were, you know, we there were various names going for the game, weren't they, at the time? Oh, we had um, we had about sixty suggestions, and I shortlisted it to, I don't know, something like ten or fifteen that we submitted to the London office. Um, so I'll actually try. I will try to find them. I know they are on my website. Yeah, there, but yeah. I'll uh, find them in due course yeah. during the stream. We're gonna take a quick break, by the way. You will be listening to Natalie Cook song again. I'm sure you love it. So somebody say, "Radar, you lucky people." Yeah, we'll catch you later. Just in I'm about just... five minutes or so. Okay. Stay with us.
Welcome back. <laughs> so, um, as I was telling you before, um, we um, we got some alternative titles for the Angel of Darkness. We got, so we got them out, yeah. One of them was Doom Signs, Savage City, Fallen Angel, and just Lara. <laughs> just Tomb Raider, Lara. Dark Truths. Wasn't there like some sweary ones? I'll be well, there were, Andy Sanders, there were, but um, I can't remember whether I edited those. There was something like Tomb Raider and some shit and stuff like the Raider of Stuff or something. Andy Sanders, yeah. Martin Iverson, guaranteed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good. Lara Croft, quite nice, really. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lara Croft Evolution, The Dying Breed. I like the quite nice, really. That's quite. <laughs> Who can hear yeah, there's a kick-ass title. <laughs> that was Lara shortlisted. Quite you nice, shortlisted really. that one. Yeah, yeah. I like those. <laughs> Smoking Metals. Raging Elements. Images of Light. New Legends. No Limits. Well, yeah, there's loads. Uh, yeah. That... So people can access those on, yeah. on, uh, yeah. on, on uh, Tomb of Ash. Yeah. Tomb of Ash, yeah. Just yeah, there were, some good, there were some good funny ones there. But there, yeah. some, there were actually some quite very nice, good really. titles as well. Yeah. yeah. Quite nice, really. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, Chris Cooper's, Lara Croft. Chris Cooper's not Cooper's as bad as she's painted. Can right. you not hear the names of the people? Like when, when you read them, like, you can hear like the guy who. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's. Uh, I can just hear. Um, yeah. Quite nice, really. Um, now nah, questions, questions, questions. questions. We've got some questions. Uh, have you listened to the Shadow of the Tomb Raider music? No, no. I should. I just should. Ask me. I, I need, ask me. I've ask me. You. Ask me. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've got time now to put aside to be able to title this, this stuff. So I'm going to, obviously, because now I'm not working the, the previous job yeah. that I left, I've got lots of time. You've got loads of spare time. Yeah. You, you don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with yourself anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. to, uh, just sit in the studio playing some, you know, just, yeah. just yeah. share bliss. As you do. But yeah, I'm going to um, I'm gonna have a listen to, uh, you know, I, I do have Jason Graves' CD, which he sent to me and signed a few years back, and I need to have a proper listen for that mm. at some point soon, so... Basically, you've got to catch up with your creative life, haven't you? Yeah. Because now, now that the work's not getting in the way, you've got to. You've, exactly, you've I do. I need to catch, catch up. With, yeah. yeah. I just say, I think it's an old age. I'm going to say old age thing. Yeah. I think it's an old age thing because, like, even chart music now, I used to be quite aware of what was who was who yeah. and what was going on and when. Yeah. Now I just listen to stuff. I think, oh, I have no yeah. clue who this yeah. is, you know? Yeah, that's, that's the same um, with me. I mean, I don't. I, I watch a lot of DVDs, I watch a lot of films, um, uh, read a lot of books. Be, but, what? <laughs> You know, no, no, you know, there's little things where you sit in the hand on the yeah, side, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't, I, you know, I don't, I don't know what current games are. I don't. I, I, well, that's it. I used to be just quite not up to date with them. At I used all. to be an avid gamer. I was, you know, I grew up with the Commodore 64, Amiga, that yeah. kind of thing. I was, I, you know, I lived and breathed games back in the day. But I got to a point in my life mm. where um, I just kind of lost touch with it all. Yeah, you know, and you, I, I, I don't think games will catch on. I, I think, I, I, I think, think yeah. it's a dead avenue. I think I, they'll I just think die so, away yeah. and disappear. Yeah. Yeah. But what I used to like about games, I used to like that it was, it was your little getaway from real life. You know, mm. yeah, it would be all kind of make believe, and it would be so mm. different now with the try to get too realistic that it's too close to real life, in my opinion. Mm. Um, it's there's a lot of good stuff out there, you know, a lot of soft graphics and soundtracks, yeah, but yeah. you know, it was just the way they made them back then. I mean, maybe it's just a, you know, a time of life that you you know that you, you kind of get. Um, you, you hook back to the eighties was the time for me, so so I kind of lost touch yeah, with gaming. Yeah. You know, it's like have you seen have you seen um, the Spielberg one, Ready Player One? You know, and, and all of the references in there are from the eighties, and it's really interesting. To yeah, they have all Lara Croft references. Sorry, there's Lara there. there. Yeah, yeah, there's all, all the game references, all the film years. references, the cultural references. It's fantastic for yeah you know, for the eighties for yeah. the eighties decade. It's, it was I revolutionary, like it. you know. I sing with yeah. like music. Um, yeah. Technology, music technology it was the 80s, you know, since so yeah, uh, yeah. it's and everyone still wants to know music, that. Yes. even people who weren't born <laughs> or around in the sort of 80s want a bit of that, yeah, you know. Yeah. It was just something about that era that yeah. really made yeah, it. Yeah, what, watching that DVD, Ready Play One, that's the nearest I've got to looking at any game stuff now. Yeah. You know, I have people tell me about stuff, but um, yeah, 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 it's just uh, I think as soon as I start working games and living, breathing games, you kind of you, you lose interest because you know how it's. How it works, how, how it goes developed. together, yeah. and the, or it, how it doesn't take away. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, there is that. But it takes away the magic of what you, yeah. you know, what yeah. you kind of the idea. Yeah. But um, 
I, I remember Gavin Rummery, I, I mentioned this last time, but somebody asked me, you know, what games do you play? And I said, I don't play them. And Gavin Rummery was on the, um, he was on the panel as well. And he said, no, I don't either. Because there was this dreadful, <gasps> you know, and Gavin Rummery said, no, I don't either. Because when you're working on them, you don't, you know, you don't yeah. want to go back and be bothered playing them then. You Absolutely. know, you yeah, might want to explain to people do. what panel you mean. Sorry? What panel? What panel? Uh, it's something to do with one that Ash got together in 2016 in Expo. That's not uh, what I meant. That's I, the one. I, I just wanted one? to tell you the, the fact yeah. that it was. I can't like, remember well, it. You didn't, you didn't have, was it? It was that one. It was that one. But <laughs> what I mean is, you didn't have to say that I made it. What I'm yeah. trying to say to explain to people who don't know yeah. what panel, yeah. what panel it was. It was called Designs Reunion Panel. Yeah. At the play no, Expo. I know exactly which one it was. Yeah. No, it was the one that Ash You do. Some people don't. That's I am. Telling. Um, no, that was a great get together, wasn't it? It, it was, was fantastic. fantastic. That was the first time we'd met since we since Angel's Arms, yeah. Yeah, since, yeah, since, yeah, since you got divorced. Yeah. Yeah, since we got yeah, divorced. Yeah. Yeah. You can watch <laughs> that you can watch the panel in full on YouTube, just Google Core Design that play Expo 2016. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And the best part of it is I'm in it, yeah. Yeah. I think the best part was the lead. But, but unfortunately, Pete isn't. He was in the audience. You, you wouldn't. Just, you wouldn't you, you weren't happy shy. about going up there. No, I'd rather watch you make. It was a great shame. Oh, I'd rather make fun of you. No, it was a shame though. Just just before the panel went on, I broke down in tears. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. was awful. Yeah. No, it wasn't. Well, I did oh. when they were when they were having all those um, uh, affirmation. You know those those um, cross um, confessions. Yeah, yeah, confessions of people and the effect that the games had. I, I, I just found that incredibly emotional and I still do because I still get people contact me and saying the effect that Angel of Darkness has had on them and it's very very powerful it is in fact even probably more so now um, you know years on but when that was happening at the at the at the actual expo I could see Ash having trouble you know controlling his emotions but I was as well and, and quite a few other mind people mind you were. I made that video yes you made it and yes. I made it deliberately so people cry and yes, I was like yeah yes. I'm going to put them you're going to make them ground. cry the dramatic ones and go it, at the end where the angel of darkness kicks in you. I'm going to shoot them at the <laughs> with camera you know up close yeah and oh my fucking god yeah. I just could not but, yeah, but it was hard to hold it together at that point I did not expect it was but very for something that was 15 years ago yeah. it's it, to see it's still having this ongoing yeah, it's emotion. It's you know I do I get I get emails and and, and yeah. messages through saying it's changed my life. It's, yeah, and it's like it, it, I can't comprehend that because it's like it, to me back then. I mean I don't know you felt, but it was to be. I went to work, done some music, yeah. went yeah. out and got pissed, whatever you know. And I never ever thought that in 10, 15 years time, whatever it, it would be. Well, I was I was thinking this is my breakthrough into the big time, and it wasn't, of course. But I still get those messages from people, and I still get people <laughs> saying you know it. it it affected my life very yeah. powerfully. I now do work in design and stuff. You and I still have difficulty quite grasping the fact that Processing this it, yeah, is yeah. true. You know, it it's does. like, is it, is it really true that it had that much effect on people's lives? And of course it is, because people are saying this, but yeah. it's like, it's hard to take in. It, it, it's very hard to process. It's um, somebody says, and it's I, wonderful. I, I do, it's wonderful I do music hear. because I listen to Angel Darkness, or yeah. and I'm very inspired by your music. I think it's amazing. Yeah. They call you Mr. Connolly, yeah. and I'm like, oh, Peter, Peter, you know. It's yeah. like, and it's it's just amazing that. Well, people don't tell me that you were wonderful. Uh, they tell me yeah. I was wonderful. I was talking about you. Oh, you're talking about yeah, me. Yeah, oh, right, yeah. okay, okay. But it's all about Mr. Connolly. It's all about. I'm Peter Connolly. Well, he thinks he's Mr. Connolly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does. He doesn't know where Darby is. <laughs> He doesn't know what to write. I know a damn music. I just couldn't place uh, whatever it was. Uh, Sweet Pines, what was it called? <laughs> yes, so um, <laughs> send us all the questions you have and all the comments, and we will read some of them out and to these two or to myself, humble self. Um, right, Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Rather, both of you, to be honest. Um, what do you think about Alexei and Yasmin K. Into a Darkness track? Angel of that the world is in your hands. It's just for you. Oh, have I've, you seen it? I, I think I, I might have it. seen it and heard it. Um, this goes back to me kind of putting time aside and listening to it and really kind of understand it. But I kind of lost touch with quite a lot mm. um, from sort of mid, uh, early to mid 2000s. Um, I kind of took a, a turning point and you know, you know, I think I hit an edge where I stopped kind of like, you know, listening and looking at it up, you know, other people's work, playing games, this, that, and the other. So, I, 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 it, like I said, I need to probably have a listen to this properly yeah. to give a proper analysis and yeah. Um, yeah. review of what, you know, the thoughts. But yeah. just the, the, again, just the thought that somebody's done a cover 
um, it, it's took the time out to be inspired to write yes. something. I just think yes. it's absolutely overwhelming, yes. absolutely amazing, and it gets my utmost respect. You know, yeah. there's, there's a track on that iTunes. Um, it's been out for a few years now. It uses my Tomb Raider music. Uh, it uses my Tomb Raider four sample with your permission. No, no. <laughs> that's that's ah, another kettle of fish. There's two story, sides to that right, story. Okay. There's two sides to that story. I'm, I'm absolutely you know amazed that yeah. somebody's thought right. Yeah. I could do something with this, and they've yeah. spent time making it. It theirs. But at the same time, the the skip the bit where they ask permission to do that. But uh, you know that I'm I'm not kind that of bothered. I'm not that bothered about that. It's it's the fact that somebody mm. thought enough of it. Thought enough of it to be able to do something with it, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm quite um. I, I, I'm very respectful of that, you know. Mm. But yeah, the um, I, I see a lot about people is. going off and doing fan fiction and writing their own stories yeah. and their own versions of, of the characters. I think it's great, you know. I, I really think it's it's that's what I used to do. And I I, I I grew up reading comics and watching films, and and that was my that was my creative boiling pot. Yeah, you know? and, yeah. And, and and ideas that I've come across in comics. Not uh, every creative um, is inspired by something. So if you go back mm. to what your if you if I go back to the the yeah. the idols that I'm inspired by. They'll, you know, they'll not be um, ultimately kind of original. They'll say, oh, "Well, I was inspired by this and that." And it, yeah. goes, it goes back and back. Yeah. I, I, I totally get that. Um, well, I, but when people say, "Where do you get your ideas from?" and I've got a four, I mean, I got so not tired of being asked the question because it's a genuinely uh, interested question. Um, but I, I actually started typing up all the the books I'd read as, as a kid, yes, um, yeah. and all the comic and the artists that I'd been influenced by, and, and all the rest. And I've got a pages of A4 sheets now with all these um, all these influences on my work, going right up to uh, about two thousand. You know, books yeah. I'd read up to that point, films I'd seen up to yeah, that point, absolutely. and they had a tremendous effect on me. You know, just even just one scene of you know like a dark tunnel and somebody appearing at the end of the tunnel and what you if, know, it, 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 it sticks something there. Yeah, yeah, it, and it becomes it, it, like a palette that you draw yeah. on all the time. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, Mark A. I don't know whether you know the person, Peter. Ask Pete if he'll consider a lunch party at the Sharpening Center. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. What you surprised me. I'm not going to explain that one. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out to Duck Orr, though. And uh, Mark A, thank you. <laughs> Big shout out to Duck Orr, who is watching with the intent in the new, in the new crown. He's, uh, he's, he's asked <laughs> Santa for a Mona Pinta t-shirt this year. Neil he, James Joseph Todd. Who is what that? he's just wanted Kanye Lance. Ah, right, okay. But yes, <laughs> a Mona Cons t shirt will be your coming your Have way. Have you got friends then? No. No. They, these are imaginary friends. Imaginary friends, yeah. I've got these typing in here. I've got three imaginary friends. Yeah. <laughs> he has an app on his phone that sends out comments and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, keep sending us questions, you guys. Um, Murty, what did you think about the whole. Tomb Raider Dark Angel Symphony idea when you first heard about it. Now, when you first heard about it, it was called something else, but yeah. The the, the Dark Angel one. Yeah. Um, we mentioned this last time. I, I, I was picking Ash up from the um, from the, uh, the, the the station at Chester um, and he just mentioned it. And I just went through the roof and I was driving. Like, Whoa, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so yeah, I thought it was a great was idea dangerous. because um, some of us have been discussing it in the background previous to that, you know, and that's obviously how it, you know, the whole thing came about. And I thought it'd be just because um, I'd got early versions of, of various things that Peter had done for Angel of Darkness. And I thought it'd be great to see all those really just brought together. Uh, and of course, I was very interested in seeing any any new pieces you did, like for, for Curtis or Morgo or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But the fact that suddenly it had taken form and taken shape, and it was it was like, yes, this is yeah, the Dark Angel. Uh, let's 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 do it. Let's we actually it. called it the Symphony of Revelations at the time, but we changed yeah, the name yeah. now. Um, please don't tell us you like that one more. Yeah, <laughs> it's, no, it's no, not no, going to change. Dark Angel is, is it's not going to change. The Dark Angel Symphony yeah. is our final name. That's it. We're not changing it again. Uh, but yeah, the, and I remember the same thing happened. People said, "Oh, let's let's come up with some titles," and I came up with about twenty really, really great titles, and somebody else came up with Dark Angel. So that's it. Probably yeah, it was you. Was I just marketing. Yeah, it was you. Yeah. Now you went with Dark Angel. Yes, but I mean for this yeah. Dark Angel because I was Symphony of Relation. I mean for the mm. Angel of Darkness. That that no, we've already discussed that one. No, 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 we don't want to discuss that. No. <laughs> Not sure what these two are to again. Um, a shop. Where is it again? Is it in Derby? It's a shopping centre. <laughs> <laughs> 
Peter, uh, who are some of the film or video game music composers you are, you admire? Uh, first, rather. Uh, there's loads, there's loads out there. Um, you need to write I, an A4 I list do, so you can just... I do, so I'm just like... Yeah, you yeah just send them the list. Uh, I, I, I go back to um, the old school video gaming, you know, in the 80s um, on the Commodore 64. I mean, I'm look, you're looking at people like Rob Hubbard, uh, Martin Galway, you know, there's a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of the C sixty four stuff, which is what really inspired me to kind of like Rod Hubbard, Rob, Rob Hubbard, Rod L Hubbard, Ron L Hubbard, <laughs> um, which is being known, not known for, but it's not, it's not, not the same. But um, I used to listen to that music and think, you know, for this um, computer to be able to kind of yeah. generate this type of like um, excitement, you know, was, yeah. I mean, the the, yeah. Sid, the the Sid chip had three channels. And the music that I used to produce on these three channels was absolutely just overwhelming, you know. Yeah. And it used to be a big thing back in the eighties. You would look at all the, the you know, the, the Commodore, um, Commodore user and Zap sixty four magazines, and it would have, um, it, it would be a big issue to have like a top ten of the music. You know, it was a big thing. Everyone used to kind of love the music. A lot of the games I used to buy, I used to just buy specifically yeah. for the music. Yeah. So listen yeah. to it. Um, but there's there's a lot of guys. I just my kids are really good. Um, he's really 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 good. Um, video game composer. I just I just composer in general. You know, he knows his stuff. He worked on the original Assassin's Creed stuff. And when I was working on that game a few years, Assassin's back, Creed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I was yeah. I was going through some of the some of the assets from the original <laughs> games and every every you know every bit of it was just really inspired us you know just mm. like, oh god i could learn mm. from that i could yeah. you know that i could take yeah. a, a, inspiration from that and take it to something yes. like 15 yes. years there and yeah. it's not a matter of copying it is it but it, it's what it opens up in you yeah. it, within yourself it could just be a yeah. production thing it could make you think you yeah. know how how you could best work the violin with the flute you know it, it yeah. kind of does it in a way that works really yeah. well it, it i don't want to just take this bit of music and sample it i want to kind yeah. of like Okay, I need up my quality kind of yeah. thing. So it's you know, it's just my kid's a really good example. Um, he, he's, he's done a lot of good work. Um, there's a lot yeah. of good. There's a lot of good um, video game composers out there, but they're not really yeah. kind of given the recognition that I think they probably deserve. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit like that with 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 the writing. You know, I mean, uh, when I came across Philip Pullman and his Dark Materials, you know, I was absolutely blown apart by that. I didn't want to write that. But I wanted to some, write something that had the same effect yes, yeah, exactly. in my yeah, life. Yeah. I wanted to create something that would have the same effect in other people's yeah, lives yeah. that that had had in mind. So it was that kind of inspiration. But it wasn't like I wanted to copy it. Or and you could do that with music. You can take the yeah. emotion yeah. And, 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 to, and make it into something different. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it's... Um, I, I, the question I've been meaning to ask is, is uh, you were talking about dark stuff before and dark elements. And I... I if ever you get anybody gets to read the shadow histories, you'll realize there's a very very dark side to the story there, um, and I have this dark side of myself. So can I ask you a dark question, which is, if you were to die, right, who would you want to carry on writing your stuff or, or handling your stuff, or who would you like to look after your 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 material to um, bring it to bring it to life? Wow, um, that, 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 the, you never the, thought of that one. I'm not a dark. I'm never going to die. But uh, <laughs> I, I would probably say my children. Um, you yeah. know, I, I hope they, I hope they adopt some sort of musical character. You know, yeah, I know right. my daughter Cara. She's only five now. Um, she loves singing. You know, she'll sing at every opportunity, and she, yeah. she, it's it's not just singing for the singing sake. She she really takes particular detail to the notes, so she'll bend the notes where the notes need to be bent. Right. Might not be perfect right. in tune, you know, right. maybe it's a bit of auto tune for now. Yeah. But I think developing that, I think she's going to have some sort of musical background at least. I would love to see Patrick with the musical background. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to see Sean with the musical background. He was playing, um, he, he was playing um, the, the, the brass instrument at school a few years ago. Mm -hmm. He did really, really well. Yeah. And at the end of the year, he was offered the opportunity to carry it on, which he didn't. But right. well, you know, yeah. there was a point in my life where yeah. I loved synthesizers, I loved music, and then I stopped for a few years, and then yeah. until I kind of thought, no, Did this you? is what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You stopped completely doing. I music. Stopped doing because I was sent to lessons. I was I had to be here or there. You know, well, it was kind of more Because I stopped drawing and, and writing for about three years at one point. Completely stopped. It was when I was going out to India and to oh, right. okay, yeah, yeah. I was doing a lot of practical stuff, so I wasn't actually. Doing much in the way of drawing it, that. how I interesting you need yeah. to take that time out. I mean, like, yeah. I wasn't forced to do this, but I felt I needed to be there, and yeah, I yeah, kind of yeah. took that time out. and I think I, I recharged my batteries, and by the time yes. they were fully recharged, yeah. I kind of latched on to what yeah. I wanted to do, yeah. and I was more involved with the. Uh, 
I love the orchestral side of things, but I also love the mm. techno technological aspect of the music. Mm. So I kind of brought the two together. And obviously, I love video gaming and I love Rob Hubbard, Von L. Hubbard, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> at the time. And I get kind of it all just kind of fused into one, you know. And yeah, I knew yeah. I wanted to do video games, yeah. but I wanted an orchestral, electro kind of yeah. side of things. Yeah. And that kind of thing, that's where I progressed. But I mean, if you were to if you were to leave all your 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 working material and your write and your, your music and stuff. Um, it'd be a long wait before you, 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 your kids might be able to. Can, can you envisage? I don't know, they're growing pretty rapidly. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the blink of an eye, they would be able to. It's a weird question. Rapidly. It's yeah. a dark question in it's, a way. Who would, I don't know. I, I feel, in a way, I've got, I've, I've got a lot of ideas, um, which, if I died tonight, um, they would go to waste. No one find them. They're, they're on hard Because that's what I feel. You know, and I've I feel got all I should... this background material, and it's like somehow I need it. What, what would happen to that? You know, what would happen to that? I mean, a lot of it I've given to Ash for Tomb of Ash, and yeah, I've placed yeah. with other people. You know, and I've given I flash sure drives have. with the material. But it's like, yeah, yeah. It, it does. And I mean, I know people are interested in it. it would be interesting to know that somebody might take that and, and make it into. Yeah, something. I, I have thought. I mean, I do have a CD. Yeah. Uh, uh, hard drives were. You know, loads of ideas and kind yeah, of yeah. motifs, that kind of thing. I somehow need to get them to a point where yeah, you, you somebody know, needs to sit just down just and listen, listen to it, and, them, yeah. and, and yeah, yeah, make something of it. Well, I mean, I have I have discussed with Richard Niles with me as well. There's a lot of song ideas I had from thirty years ago, thirty plus years ago that I keep I kept saying back then when I when I get a record deal, when I get this bit of equipment, yeah, when I go in the yeah. studio, and I never ever finish them. There's a lot of what I would presume is decent stuff in there. Um, and if somebody can come in and pull yeah. on on that idea and take it to do the next level it. Yeah. and give me original yeah. credit for it, you know, do what you want with it, but give me original credit. Th yeah. That would be, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff there that I would be, I, I need to somehow get out there. But with Richard Nell, they've already explained that these songs from 30 years ago, I want to hand them over to him and mm. see what he can do with them. He yeah. might just say it's a load of shit, yeah. scrap it, or you he might hear something good in it, you know, yeah. and take it to the yeah. next level. And, yeah. I, I might not. I mean, it's, it's like Prince. A good example. Prince. There's still a lot of tips and ideas that he's got in these vaults it's that have never been utilized. David Bowie. Yeah. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, Lennon. Yeah. This this stuff keeps coming to light, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, I just need some platform to be able to. Yeah. Well, not the same here's level. to a long life. <laughs> <laughs> um, a question for um, well, for me. Am I going to play Expo next Scotty. year? Uh, Play Expo is not on this year, as some of you know, 2018, but 2018 possibly I can't be saying it just yet because October will be super busy for us in terms of delivering this, so not sure. Um, right. right. Did Matt, that's probably for you, Kurt, uh, Murphy. Did Matt, Matt, you're going to call me Curti, so did you hear? Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I, I nearly call it Curti. Oh, Curti. Murti, Curti. Oh, that's a yeah. dirty Murti the hybrid. Curti. The, the Curtis Murti hybrid, Curti. Dirty Murti Curti. <laughs> uh, did Mary take Constantine's surname or maybe hyphenated or maybe even kept her own? I just want to be sure because it's not said anywhere. Uh, tribally, um, Mary Connell would keep her own name. I mean, she had a. Um, um, a, a tribal name as well that she kept, but yeah, she kept a name Mary Cannell. They, they were married, but she didn't take the name uh, Heistam, no, no, okay. Um, and it wasn't hyphenated. No. Question from Murti and Peter When are you doing artistic things like writing, writing or music? How much of it is dedicated to pleasing the audience rather than yourself? Ah. Uh. I, I, I tell you what, you answer first. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're such a gentleman. <laughs> when I write something, I, I, I tend to write something that I feel inspired by. Mm. So I think it all starts off with how I feel about what I'm writing. But it obviously, because of the line of work I'm in and because of what I do, I've got to also think about how it's going to please the client. Mm. Um, if I do something, I kind of naturally expect people to kind of mm. get where I'm coming from. Yeah. Um, but that might also be But the you case. don't write down to people's expectations. No, not, not, no. It, it, the, the whole nucleus, the whole core of what I write comes from me. It's got to, it's got to feel right for you. It's got to please yes, you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and well. then the rest is kind of like, okay, well, this kind of needs to meet that requirement, mm. that demand. Maybe somebody might pick on this. Or somebody might actually say, there's not enough violins there, there's yeah. not enough synthesis yeah. there. So I, I will kind of think about what people want or what the general public wants. You'll take wants. on uh, people's But the, the core but... is always 
mm. my kind mm. of like, original, you know, how what inspires me to make a start on this. Yeah, yeah. How I beef it up, it's down to yeah. thinking about how other people will perceive it. Yeah. Um, you can ask me now if you want. <laughs> you want to read the question again? Yes. Uh, <laughs> in terms of writing, how much of it is actually to please the audience than yourself? Oh, well, that's a very interesting question. Now, um, <laughs> the answer comes in 16 parts. No, um, <coughs> the writing has to be something that sets... what The things that set me on fire are the things I write about. So I have to be very, very interested in the material that I'm using, the material I'm handling. At the back of my mind is always the awareness somewhere at some level that I'm wanting people to read this. But what I'm trying to do is, by writing the stuff I write, I'm hoping to find people who are simpatico with the ideas I'm using. So I'm, I'm reaching out for people who are interested in the same things, but I'm not doing it to please them. I'm doing it to communicate with them about how I feel about the material I'm writing. So the things, you know, I've said this before, the things I was doing for, for Shadow Histories, my own project, um, I was very involved in that and it was very, very widespread. It was very wide reaching. But a lot of the elements that I proposed for the um, what became the Angel of Darkness were very similar because I knew that I could write about that with a passion and I could actually apply myself. If I was given ideas that I wasn't really interested in, if they said, oh, yeah. we want it to be in a, you know, such and such and such, and I thought, I don't have any empathy with that. I wouldn't have been able to write with the same energy and the same passion. So I'm writing for myself. Uh, uh, but it's an attempt to communicate with other people that I hope will get what it is that I'm on about. And the great thing about what's been happening in recent years is clearly it has reached people who are interested in, in the same sorts of things, yeah. and it's set them alight as well. And that's the, that's the, the, the you know the greatest payoff. But no, it's I'm writing it for myself. Uh, and in fact, you have to, um, particularly if it was shadow histories. I didn't have anybody interested in that. Um, you know, I wanted to just write about the elements that excited me. Um, and it's yeah, sometimes you just do something for yourself, don't you? Yes, yes. And, and, and there's very, very strict standards. You know, it has to be of a, a certain quality and a certain standard and, and, uh, and so on. But uh, yeah, I it's, think that's it, sometimes healthy for the creative mind is just to do it for yourself and nobody else. Yes. Even yes, if it never reaches yes. anybody else. Like it's just yeah. there for your own listening yeah. or reading. And, you know. and, and one thing that somebody um, I heard, um, or oh, Joss Whedon saying, and I've heard things from various other people that I admire, uh, Joss was saying, never ever write down to an audience. Trust that your audience is intelligent enough. If they're not intelligent enough, they won't be your audience. If they are intelligent enough, they'll get what you're writing for. So don't write down to it. Don't over explain things. Don't, don't simplify your ideas. Don't make them overly complicated. We'll keep your ideas clear and simple and true. Yeah. And the audience that you're looking for will find them and come to you. And I said, thanks, Joss. That's really nice you saying that. How about another pint? And he said, sure, Murty. Or Curty, he used to call me. Yeah, he used to call me Curty. <laughs> <laughs> no. He did. You've just been you <laughs> Yeah, funny people. Uh, they love your answer. That's what they say. Oh. But Pete, not <laughs> yours. <laughs> <laughs> Probably both, to be honest. Bastard. I don't know. <laughs> um, that's actually no more questions sent to you anymore. That's the last one. Interestingly, um, oh, can I switch my life machine off? <laughs> Probably. Life support. <laughs> I can just imagine the uh, toddy and all the kind of lads sitting in the pub now, just having a very old giggle. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to once again talk about the extra money that we're raising through the shop that they're going into to reach strategy goal one and two that we haven't reached the kickstarter potentially strategy goal three uh we don't know uh we will let you know as soon as we reach that that amount obviously backers do check your email for your 10 percent discount code um which will expire on january 2nd so make sure you use it before then you can use it for as many orders as you want it doesn't have the quantity limit but it does have um date limit so you must use it by the 2nd of january otherwise it's gone you will have no discount anymore um that pretty much finishes our stream um any final thoughts you two are we doing anything derby <laughs> what was that was that may again i'm just i'm actually taking this in now that's for about may is it we're thinking of doing that yes in, in, may the 25th yeah, yeah. it's pending. 25th, 25th, yeah. okay. 25th of I'm, may. I'm really looking forward to meeting inna and lara uh that'll be that'll be so you'll meet good. them before that will yeah. i oh yeah. good oh good so oh, even better we'll film but, yeah and also i look forward that. to meeting anybody yeah. who who turns up um 
Yeah. I mean, what you'll have to do is come in some kind of that T-shirt or, I don't know, something that you could buy online that would, that would show that you were the part of the, the, you know, the Lara Croft world. But, you know, that would be great to meet everybody who, who can there turn be, yeah. there, yeah. yeah. Right, so thank you again for watching. Please buy stuff on shop if you want to. Um, look out for more stuff like it's Strength Diary or the classic merchandise that I mentioned previously. If you just only just turned in, you want to rewind the whole thing and watch it again. Uh, but Sad. that's pretty much finishes the stream. So thank you for watching. What are you doing down there? Oh, I just, I just. Um, for those people who didn't see the last thing, this is some of the stuff that will be appearing on. Oh the, yeah, let's do that on the. Um, in the journal. Oh, uh, you done quite a lot of Curtis's that, well. journal. That's yeah. Curtis Strand's diary that we that yeah. we will produce. Yeah. So, um, you want to display that? Some of the artwork yeah. there. Some of the artwork there. Um, this was I mentioned this again very briefly on the, on the last one. This is I got very intrigued on what the lo how the logo for Curtis Trent's T-shirt came about. So I've been I've been looking into the background of that and what, how that may have come about. Um, so there's going to be a lot of information about about that there, but um, also about the the assassin, who um, uh, I, I've I've got very excited about him as well, and writing about the back. He's actually run into Curtis on previous occasions, but they never had a, a head to head, and of course it's Lara who pops him off. So um, in the uh, One Crow's apartment. Yeah, yeah. In One Crow's, uh, uh, was it One Crow's? Uh, yep. Spoiler. Yeah, one course of course. Oh, it was, right. yeah. Yeah, right, okay. You yeah, we see people know more Send than that. the cleaner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the cleaner. Yeah, he, he's actually he, he's, he's actually got a different name now. So, uh, what, the mopper? <laughs> no, no, no. Cleaner. Right, so once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for sending all your questions and stuff like that. We see you next time. I don't think this is definitely our last stream before Christmas. I know I said last time that it was. Uh, this is our definite last stream before Christmas, so Merry Christmas, Merry Happy, happy Hanukkah, holidays, yeah. Happy ha ho, Holidays, Ho Ho Ho, Ho Ho Ho, <laughs> <laughs> you just called me a ho? <laughs> um, yes, it's a wrong. bit tasteless, it's spelt wrong, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we'll catch you next time. Uh, by the way, when you buy stuff from the shop, please share your purchase with us on social media, we'd love to know what you yeah, bought, so, yeah. well, we obviously can see it in our orders and stuff, but it, let people know that you bought stuff. Uh, there is a share button at the checkout. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Okay, okay. and happy new year. Happy All new the year. Best.